and welcome to Meet Our Exes Success Stories podcast. I'm host and coach Amanda Lea, and I'm eager to speak with our guest today. He's a professor emeritus of nutrition at the University of Illinois, and he's a seminal researcher in whey protein, who has made significant contributions to this field, which interests us as animal-based eaters so much. We're privileged to have you here to share your diet success story with our audience. Welcome, Don Lehman. It's certainly my pleasure to join you, and it should be fun uh, talking about, wow, how do I eat? <laughs> That's excellent. Yes, it would be a fun time for sure. So let's jump right in. Please tell us about your diet and health before you get, began eating the way you currently do. Yeah, well, I think um, sort of my background really relates to my childhood and I grew up on a farm in Illinois. And so a typical farm was we raised cattle and pigs and chickens and, and uh, protein was always a central part of every meal. You basically Breakfast started out with bacon and eggs, and lunch had uh, one of the meats, and dinner had another. And, I, you know, I always learned sort of a protein-centric approach to eating, uh, and, and basically then you added in other foods, carbohydrates or fats, basically for the energy. So, you know, working on a farm, you needed lots of energy. You started with your protein, and you filled it out with the, with the other fuels. And you know, I always sort of carried that with me. And, you know, I wandered into uh, my research. I was always interested in science and sort of got into biochemistry, kind of waded into nutrition and all these, my background in farm animals, food, and kind of came together with my science interests. And that's kind of how I sort of developed my philosophy. That's excellent. Sounds like a really good place to start and to develop a philosophy right in there at a farm. That's amazing. So how is it that you currently, I mean, was there a switch between how you ate when you were younger to where you are now in your life? Or are you eating the same way as you always have? And what does that look like? Yeah, the, the, there's been transitions in life, but I guess I would have to give my mom, my mother, a lot of credit in that she started out with a really good balance. And, you know, when you're, when you're a 16-year-old kid, you can kind of eat anything in sight. So I, you know, I probably ate, well, I definitely ate a lot more carbohydrates then than I would do now uh, because now I'm 70 and I don't need the same amount of fuel. So, uh, you know, that was sort of, I think, a good fundamental start. Uh, as I got into studying food and nutrition, I certainly became more precise. I eat a lot more diversity of foods now. Uh, when I was growing up in, in Illinois uh, on the farm, you kind of ate what you grew. And so you had real seasonal changes to it. I probably am more consistent around the calendar at how I balance foods now. Um, but probably the most striking change is kind of in midlife, sort of 40s to 50s, I realized I was starting to gain weight. Uh, and I weigh the same today that I graduated from high school. But in the middle, I realized I was starting to gain weight and I realized I thought I was kind of exercising about the same, but I realized I wasn't. And I realized that somewhere in midlife, your metabolism begins to change. It slows down some, and you really need to make some diet adjustments or some dramatic exercise adjustments, or you're going to lose ground. And so I definitely became much more sensitive to reducing my carbohydrates, reducing all of those things that Americans love and and breads and pastas and rices and chip, any of those kinds of things that are pure energy sources with sort of no nutritional value other than calories. And so I sort of corrected that and then I you know, sort of came back and I probably have more muscle mass today than I had when I graduated, you know, 20, when I was 20, just because of the combinations of things I do. Wow, that's amazing. And tell us more about the combination that you've found yourself in now. Yeah, so um, I think most people who know me uh, realize that I'm definitely protein centric. I sort of developed a lot of the leucine thinking. And so what I realized was that um, 
American breakfast is really awful in general. <laughs> uh, we eat no protein, and so you're getting up after an overnight fast. Your body is catabolic. You're burning a lot of fat, and the first thing a lot of Americans do is eat a lot of carbohydrates. Uh, and so what I learned from my research and what I've implemented is to basically take as many carbohydrates out of breakfast as possible, eat very much a protein-centric breakfast, which gets your body anabolic, it gets you back, you know, keeps you burning fat, accelerates your rate of burn. So I'd say, first and foremost, that's my biggest change is, you know, correcting breakfast. And that would be the change I would recommend to everyone. Everyone over the age of 40 should look at their breakfast and say, if that's not protein centric, carbohydrate controlled, you're making a mistake and you're going to pay for it. So I think that's the one. Um, the other big change is I realized that I just had to control calories more. And so I have slowly minimized my lunch meal down to where frequently I skip it. I go to two meals a day. Uh, I'm kind of into uh, time controlled eating uh, now because again, I'm looking for ways that I have really good meals that give me the breadth of protein and, and vegetables and fruits and healthy nutrition that I want. That requires some calories. And so I have to minimize meals where I might not be able to get that kind of balance. So I'm kind of a two meal a day focus for me. That's great. Wow. And thank you, by the way, for your contribution to leucine. <laughs> That's really, really huge. And way to go, mom. I forgot to say before for That's setting nice. you on the right track. <laughs> but that's really great advice that you're offering around breakfast. It's huge. I mean, generally protein. I think it's under eaten <laughs> overall. So. And it's a problem because protein in general is the hardest nutrient to handle. It has to be refrigerated. Often it has to be cooked or something, you know, depending on what form you're eating it. So I've really transitioned to using protein shakes. So, you know, I use a combination of ingredients, but basically create a 45 uh, gram protein shake in the, in the morning. And that's at least six days a week, the breakfast I have. And is that whey protein that you're using? It's generally whey. Um, I actually have my own that we've developed and hopefully we'll be back in the market again. But it's a combination of, of whey and whey, concentrate isolates, uh, milk and egg protein all kind of wrapped together. So I like diverse protein sources, not just a single one. And then I'll mix it with Greek yogurt and kefir. So I have to get my combination. And usually then I'll use like a blueberry, some sort of an antioxidant fruit to go with it. So that's kind of how I create my shake in the morning. Yeah, that sounds great. Wow, that's amazing. And actually, it's really great that you speak to using, again, all animal-based um, protein sources. And there's so many as opposed to how many people would have a shake and they'd be adding in like vegetable or plant protein yeah. sources. So that's really great. I, I definitely, I don't personally like them. I think that you can use them, but you have to realize you're always going to need more total protein. And frankly, it's going to taste like dirt. <laughs> not so appetizing to start your day I, off. Right? I have not had a protein shake that I would trade for mine yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's great that you found something that's working. So tell us more about, so you've got a weight that obviously you're happy with. So what was the overall effect of reevaluating to maybe time restricted eating and increasing your protein in the morning? What did that look like in terms of your overall health? Yeah, you know, again, I, like I said, in that sort of 40 to 50 range, I realized I was putting on some extra weight and uh, I didn't bother getting composition done, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't weight I was looking to get. <laughs> it was body fat. So I think by shifting to the protein, uh, it helps with satiety. It helps with thermic effects. It helps with basically muscle. Like I said, I think I have more upper body muscle mass now than I did when I was playing sports in high school and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think it just that protein centric approach helps you correct correct and maintain your body composition. And, you know, all of us who are getting a little older realize that that's more of a challenge. It's harder to maintain muscle mass as you get to 70 than it was when you were 35. I can test them to that. <laughs> 
Absolutely. I can only, I mean, we hear about it all the time, the importance. Well, in this community, we hear about it all the time. I'm not sure that we hear about it outside the bubble I've been in lately, but, um, but that's really great. So have you noticed any other impacts apart from, you know, your composition? Um, are there other impacts that you've noticed to your health? Um, yeah, I, you know, I think that I have a lot of energy. I like doing a lot of fairly intense sports. My my favorite hobby is playing competitive tennis. I like singles tennis. Um, so I find that my diet, which is protein centric, but has a certain amount of carbohydrates is the way I balance my energy. Um, you know, my, you know, annual checkups are all great. My triglycerides are rock bottom. You know, all of those kinds of things say that it's the right balance for me. And you know, I don't go through the day hungry. You know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm maintaining my weight. So all of the markers tell me that it's working fine. And like I said, I, my, my hobbies are downhill skiing and scuba diving and, and tennis playing and bike riding. And so, you know, at 70, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite a list. Oh my goodness. Everybody should be blessed to have so much activity going on at 70. That's amazing. Wow. Well, your story is certainly inspiring, Don. Um, never mind the contributions you've made. Um, is there anything else before we end um, this amazing few minutes hearing about your story that you'd like to share with yeah, our audience? I, I, uh... I guess the comments I would just simply make is that people need to be very skeptical about these plant-based arguments they're hearing in the media. Uh, they are really distorted. They are very biased. And, and if one looks at the origins of them, basically there's no money made in the food system to sell animal products, eggs and milk and meat all go directly to market pretty much from the farm and nobody really makes any money. It all requires refrigeration. It has perishable times. And so people get in the, in the marketplace, make the most money if they can sell you things in bags and boxes. And those are all grain derived. And so when you hear that, it's important to recognize that Americans already get 70% of their calories from plant-based foods and they're simply awful. Uh, so we don't really need more plant-based diet. We need a diet with better plants. Oh, I like that. Very well put. Well, thank you again so much for being here and sharing your diet success story with us today. Don Lehman, feel fabulous. Yeah, my, my pleasure to join you. Thanks, Amanda.